This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show, and today I'm pleased to have Jerry Oli and Des Kadena of the Misfits on the show. <laughs> How many songs do you guys have that you've worked on for the new Misfits albums? We got about 10 that are, that are pretty much ready to go. We were building a studio for my son, and we're going to make our own album and get our own studio together. And the thing is that uh, once we go into this writing mode, we're going to stay in it, and we're just going to keep cutting stuff. And we're going to keep cutting stuff until we run out of wind, and then we'll take what we got and bring it out. But, you know... It's uh, it's time for us to really put a catalog on the shelf of the new lineup. Yeah, definitely. Being on the road for 31 years, what have you learned about humanity? Uh, I learned that pe people need to be needed. You know what I mean? I mean, especially like our band. I'll grab that later. Uh, you know, the thing is, a lot of kids look up to us, and a lot of kids have a tough time out there. And music gets a lot of people through a lot of things. And more, more than... More than, you know, sometimes once a night, I'll hear people come up and say, hey, if it wasn't for your band, I wouldn't have been able to get through this time in my life. Or, hey, you guys kept me going at this point in the road. And that's really what tells you what it's all worth, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, we just played a show in San Diego at the other House of Blues. And, but, you know, the show was pretty much mob and I had problems. I was thinking, man, maybe I should just, you know, cut out. And I did, and I hung in there. I said, look, I, I, can, I can get through this. We can work it. And uh, a buddy of ours came down from uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation. You know what I mean, and and um, and what happened was that I, you know, I, I explained to them. I said, you know, I said I was having a real bad day, and I says you came down, and I'm happy I was here for you, and it made me realize that what we're doing was worth 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 the sacrifice, and uh, you know, uh, to you know, you got a kid that's sick that may be dying that wants to come up and check out your sound check or come up and do a song, and you accommodate them. It lets you know they're doing something of value. You got that kid coming to your gig, and that's all. Everything he said is true. Last night, uh, briefly, I, I went to a place called in Hollywood called the Rainbow. Then you see these people, like, everybody there is, uh, not everybody there, some are famous people, some are people who want to be famous and want to latch on to anything that they possibly can because they have nothing. So you got this kid that we can help, then you got these other people who are just, uh, it seems like it's, it's a Hollywood thing, it's disgusting. So, the, about humanity, you got some really, it's like New York, you, you see some really uh, great things, uh, human type of things happen there where people help each other. And you see some like uh, weird, there's maybe acts of violence in New York where you'll never see anywhere. It happened to us the other night in Ventura. I had gone, I had flown home already. We're, we're parked outside the Ventura Theater. I don't know if you were there because you might have went with Perla. But Kenny DeVos said, some guy got mugged right outside our bus. And our guys went out and chased the guy down the street. The guy got hit in the head with a pipe and uh, about three in the morning. And we had like two handprints on our Winnebago with the slide marks, just like you would always want in a horror film. And there it was in Ventura and in, in, in on our bus. I mean, you know, we had just left the show. Big show we did. The kids were great. The night was great. Theater was very happy to see us and good friends down there. And, you know, you know, you can have a great show with a thousand kids and then you can have one idiot that's going to hit somebody with a pipe and try and steal their money. And our buddy Kenny that just left here at the transfer said, he says, I think he might have thought it was somebody from the band coming back to the Winnebago. Because, you know, thinking they might have had money on them or something. So, so the, you know, so, but the thing is, there's good and there's bad. And I tell you what, civilization has come a long way in the last 4,000 years or whatever from, you know, being barbarians to being the civilization we are today to travel through space. And if it wasn't for good people, it would never occur. Okay, if everybody was an asshole or an idiot or a murderer or whatever, it would just be total chaos. So the bottom line is there is that 2% of, you know, deviants out there. And our job is to snuff them out. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You know, we get rid of these couple here and there. We're all good. So the thing is, I mean, for the most part, people are good. Uh, you know, uh, you got to be careful. I mean, today the media is kind of hard on people, especially on women. I mean, you know, the, how do they live up to the standards of these people that are all, you know, cut and pasted together, you know? 
a lot of women are living. I mean, all this generation of women it have have totally bowed the knee to the god, the idolatry, and the gods of like what the, the reality shows are saying they should be. So I mean, I think we're kind of like in a sick phase of the world where oh, we are basically, narcissism ba rules. Well, ba yeah, bas basically we 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 create we chisel out a statue of what we think a human should be, and then we all try to conform. You know what I mean? And if you look, uh, for example, the Mickey Mouse Club ran the world about five years ago and then they self-destructed because they couldn't handle the acceleration you can train a kid to you know to kill but then can you turn around and make him you know passionate enough to understand that they have limitations do you know what I mean and you know it's it's a it's a tough world right now especially for the young kids and you know that's why I think you know we, we got a lot to we got a lot to strive for I mean to hold our own to be who we are and you know take it as it comes you know sometimes we're playing a show to a hundred thousand kids sometimes we're playing to 50 so I mean you know the thing is we play every show like it's the same and that's sometimes how you got to deal with life. One day you're going to be a hero, one day you're going to be a heel. So, I mean, you know, you got to realize that and try and keep a level head. I think uh, consistency and, you know, uh, perseverance is really going to be key for uh, future uh, generations to, to thrive. You know what I mean? Dez, what do you love the most oh, about being in the Misfits? Um, the food. <laughs> yeah, I do like that. The That's cuisine. The, the cuisine. <laughs> uh, Raw flesh and blood. <laughs> well, I, I, I think it's just, uh, besides being in the Misfits, uh, music in general, that uh, I'm able to uh, travel, able to play music that I enjoy. Being able to get along with the guys. I mean, you see some other bands that can barely even uh, stand each other. You know, I'm not gonna name names or anything like Cause that. Cause there's way too many to name. They're, yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, we're we're pretty pretty much fun, uh, 24 hours a day. I kind of adapted the theme of it. It was easy for me. You know, they said, well, you at the beginning, uh, well, if you want it, you could wear makeup or you could do whatever you want. So I figured eventually, you know, when I first started playing, I wasn't wearing makeup and stuff like that. I might as well get into the character of the thing. Yeah, he's a big Bella Lugosi fan. So I know he... Lugosi. Jerry, what do you love most about Dez and having him in the Misfits? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Dez has got the same interests that we have. And, uh, I mean, you know, we've known him God since we were kids. And uh, the, the thing I like about Dez the most is that he really cares. You know, he cares about his friends. He cares about his family. He cares about his music, the way he does his stuff. And, you know, um, I think that's it. I think he's got a big heart. And I think... Uh, that's the best quality anybody could have, you know. And then what, uh, how fun is it having Robo in the band? Not at all. Hold, hold on. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> he's well, he's got to take five showers a day. He uh, walks around the parking lot. We can't find him. I got, where did he go? Uh, <laughs> I, 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 no, but, Robo's great. Robo's great. I know the guy longer than anybody you know, on this crew here. And, uh, you know, I know him since well, I, before I was in Black Flag. So, I mean... And then playing with him, you know, pretty much, well, there was a long period of time where he didn't play. He, he wanted to raise his family. So he wanted to was, raise goats. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, he like, uh, I pretty much have been playing with him for a long time. And it, uh, it's always been the same with Robo. You know, he, he. Uh, Robo's like a shot of whiskey straight up. That's it, you know. Yeah, he's intoxicating. He burns on the way down. No, he burns on the way down. Robo, Robo's very consistent, you know what I mean? And his son Vinny's working with us, too. He's the, he's Robo's drum tech. And the thing is, Robo, like, he gets a little, he, you know, he's getting up there, you know, he's getting a little crabby, so he likes to snap when things ain't going right. Now we got, we put Vinny in there. Vinny's like 300 pounds of buffer zone for us, you know. Well, go ahead, Vinny, go ahead. You got to deal with him. Dad, fuck you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're an asshole. You know? yeah, he calls him an <laughs> asshole and Robo laughs. laughs. <laughs> Yeah, because with us, forget it. You know, you get you, you get emotionally involved. You start getting mad. You, know, you start arguing. He laughs with Vinny, with Vinny, all we do is laugh. So he laughs at him and goes, you gotta laugh about yourself. You don't laugh about yourself. You're an idiot. He you laughs know? at him and then he goes, "Go get me my shorts or my gloves." Where's my shorts? Where's my towel? Where's my water? Where's my, where's, glasses, my yeah. where's my drum key? <laughs> Give me a minute. I'm setting I'm some setting up. up some lights. <laughs> Well, it sounds like, see, it's really cool. It's, it just it, sounds like the Misfits are one big happy family on yeah, the road. It's like it's like the Adams family. The Blaring Out Show.